Welcome to the Strength Coach Experience Podcast. Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lego. Your host. And here we and here we go, go, go. Uh, welcome everyone to the Strength Coach Experience episode 14. Uh, today I want to welcome my friend Rob Spano. Rob is the founder of uh, Brand Connect and Dr. Hemp uh, out of Miami. Rob, I appreciate the time, man, and uh, pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me on. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, you know breaking it down with you and you know just chopping it up. Of course, man. It's been a long, long time coming. So why don't we just go into, you know, kind of growing up in New York, you know, and, and kind of how that shaped you into, into where you are today. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm originally from Westchester County um, up in New York. I went to Marist College in upstate New York. I played football there for four years. Um, you know, coming out of college, I had looks, you know, to, to you know, do something more, but I ended up having the same story that you hear you know, a million times, got injured my senior year. And then um, once I graduated, I got, you know, working into sports and entertainment, started working with some athletes. Um, and then I just fell into the kind of the whole corporate realm and just started working different corporate jobs and sales and, and in different industries, whether it be PR or software sales. And um, after a bit, I just kind of, you know, I was work, working and living in Manhattan and, you know, I wanted a little switch up and I wanted to change. So I had an opportunity to come down to Miami and then uh, the rest is history from there. Yeah. Uh, awesome story, man. Miami's an awesome place. So do you feel like, you know, where you are now, do you think a lot of that was built in the early years from playing sports in high school and then in college eventually, like mindset and stuff like that? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because I was actually having a conversation with a friend of mine, um, about this last week. And uh, for me, it's like being an athlete, I think shaped, you know, a majority of that mindset that you have when it comes to like that hustle mindset, the competitiveness, the, the drive to want more, you know, like a lot of people I find, they, they get stuck in their ways and they, you know, they're okay with whether it's making a, a certain amount of money, which is perfectly fine if you're comfortable doing what you want to do or, if you're comfortable in your, in your role, by all means, you know, live your life. But for me, I always wanted more. And I, I know that that just came from the drive that I had with growing up playing basketball or playing, you know, in the driveway with my brother, never wanting to lose. And then, you know, going on to play in high school sports and then, you know, being on championship teams when I was in high school, and then going on to college and then, you know, being the, the, the kind of a big fish in a small pond coming out of high school, then going to the, you know, D1 AA level where you're now the small fish in a little bit of a bigger pond. So it was kind of, you know, for me being super competitive and, and, you know, wanting to be the starter and again, just wanting to win. Um, it really set me up for an entrepreneur mindset and, you know, where I am today, it's kind of the same mentality. You just want to keep winning. You want more. Uh, and you're not afraid to get hit. You're not afraid to, you know, in, in football terms, go across the middle, right? Like it's, uh, it's been, uh, it's been definitely something that shaped my life for sure. And where I am today. Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, uh, something you brought up with, with all the athletes, you know, athlete myself didn't play at the, at the highest of levels, but I played a little bit past high school, but yeah, it's that, that burning desire to get better, you know, and you don't really need anybody to push you, right? It's always, every time you kind of put a goal out there, you already know what you want and what the goal is. And you kind of, let yourself figure out the middle steps, if you will. Yeah, you know? and you hit it on the head. You said it. Like, you don't need someone else to push you, right? Like, when you're training for a sport, you know, there's a lot of time. The majority of the time, you're by yourself. You're training in the gym, you know, with other – you're not really, you know, in front of coaches 24-7. So, if you're slacking elsewhere, you're going to slack on the field. You're going to slack on the court. So, no matter what sport, you know, that I played growing up, it was always something that was – you know, in the back, well, you know, in the back of my head, if, if I'm going home tonight and I missed two foul shots, you know, at the line in my high school basketball game, well, I'm going to go home and get better, at, <clears throat> get better at foul shots. That's just how I was. Um, and yeah, it's ingrained in all athletes. You know, I firmly believe that one of the best things you can do is, you know, for that I think for any kid growing up is play a sport. You know, and, yeah. and still the, the best value in this. 
Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, you know, training the athletes and the youths that I do, it's the same. Parents are like, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? And I'm always like, let them play every sport. Let them play everything. Let them fail. Yeah. Let them be, you know. And, and I think, you know, touching on the youth athlete stuff, and we've talked about this off, off air before, but it's mostly like the parents want you to say, oh, just have them play football at five years old and then go, and that's what they're going to concentrate on. I'm like, no, let them play everything. Let them fail. Let them, you know, kind of struggle, and then they'll figure out what they're going to do, and then, you know, fate's going to tell you where you're going to go. You know, you could play basketball in every sport, but eventually it's going to get narrowed down, you know, and I think Absolutely. one of the issues with today's youth is, you know, the, the parents kind of – shield them from that adversity and then they only concentrate on one sport and then they somehow think that being in a weight room once a week is taking up for that that time we talked about you know kind of on your own and I, I feel like that's kind of missing today you know when I was younger of course you talked about it you know you would practice by yourself you didn't need anybody out there you know I'm sure you know growing up in the northeast like me you're out there with a shovel shooting frow shots in December yeah. you know and nobody explained that to you you know so I think that's something that um you know, is, is, is a thing that's, we're kind of losing that with athletes, you know, and I think you see it kind of on TV a little bit. I agree. And, and that's, that is a hundred percent, in my opinion, accurate with just the generation and, and how, you know, kids are now is they're afraid of adversity. You're a hundred percent, you know, hit it on the head. They're afraid to fail. They're afraid to lose. And if they do, it's like the end of the world, you know, it's, you know, they, they have to feel like they've accomplished at least something, even if they don't win, they want to feel like they did something right. You know, when we grew up, it was like a little more hard nose. It was a little bit different, but you know, it is, it's, you know, it's telling times. It shows, you know, out there with, you know, the new generation and different, you know, types of fads that come up and it's like anything else. But, yeah, uh, no, you're right. hundred percent, man. Uh, so why don't we, before we get into, you know, the brand connect, Dr. Hemp and let you kind of roll with that. I just want to go back a little bit. How was your transition, you know, maintaining that mindset out of high school and then going into D1? Just talk a little bit about that kind of change from, you know, regular to D1. Yeah. I mean, I came from a really small high school. Um, I mean, my graduating class, I think had like 92 kids in it. Oh, wow. Mine was 250. Completely grad, like the whole graduating class was 92 kids. So like I came from a really small school. Up until like my freshman or sophomore year, we had to combine uh, football teams with another local high school so that we can actually feel the full team. We didn't even have enough guys to play offense and defense. So, you know, for me, it was like coming from a, a school like that. And then when I got a little bit older, you know, I, I football became my first love. And, you know, um, I was playing two other sports. I was playing basketball. I was playing baseball. But football still was always kind of the thing that was, you know, stood out to me. And um it was fun going from that, you know, like I said, being the big fish in a small pond and then just being absolutely humbled once you get to the, the collegiate level where you're like, it doesn't matter what school you came from. It doesn't matter how big you are, how bad you are. They're bigger, they're faster, and they're stronger. Um, so just being humbled by, you know, getting to the D1 level, which was a huge accomplishment for me. And then, you know, being a part of a team where these guys are obviously on our, you know, on my side and helping me grow and, and want me to be the best player I can be there. But at the same time, they're also there to eat. So they're not taking it easy on you. And, you know, when you're a senior in high school, you know how it was like, you know, it's, it's a breeze at practice. Sometimes, you know, you don't have to do all the drills and it's kind of like, but once you get to college, they open up your eyes and it's, you know, it's a rude awakening when I think it was my first week, uh, it was the first week at practice and I was on punt and I was running down the field trying to find, you know, the returner to make a tackle like my first week of practice, you know, show off for all the coaches. And I'll never forget. I still talk to my boy. Um, my boy, Sean lays me out in the middle of the field. I must've <laughs> flew like 10 yards back. I popped back up right away. Like nothing happens, but I, after that day, my head up was on a swivel. He was like the senior middle linebacker, like, you know, all conference. And uh, that was the first memory that I have of being woken up from being a, a high school player and then going into the collegiate level and being like, all right, well, uh, it's a totally, totally different ballgame here. Yeah, I think it's uh, something you bring up that's that's kind of a, a running thing. You know, it's that ability to, from high school, you know, you're a big fish in small pond, you go into college, and now everybody is the best player on their team, and everybody comes from kind of the same thing with that same mindset, you know, and it's always – crazy to me, you know, coaching freshmen or, or kids that are seniors, you know, they, they talk all this, this game and, and they think they're going to go into it. And I'm like, listen, it doesn't matter who you are, where you're going, how good you are, you're going to be humbled. I mean, similar yeah. story to you, my first game in JUCO, I remember 
I was playing shooting guard. I pump faked, right? The guy goes up in the air, six, seven. I dribble to the right. I pull up again. On the way down, he punched the ball. It sounded like a kid at a home running kickball to the other side of the gym. And my coach smiles at me and points to the bench next to him when I walk off the court. But like I said, going back to it, it's that humbleness, man. And I think, you know. You learn from it, though. Yep. Exactly. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. I never did that again. I mean, I, exactly. I made sure there was a person in my way. I mean, I, yeah. you know, you, like you said, head on a swivel learning. But I, I think, you know, going back to what we talked about before, by shielding kids these days and and not letting them go into that adversity, you know, when you go into that, they're going to fail. You know, that's that's I think the biggest worry for me is like seeing the kids like, yes, it's a change. It's a different time. But at the same time, you're setting them up to fail if you don't teach them how to get through a wall. Because the first time they get laid out on a kick return or the first time they get the ball, you know, bang back another zip code, what are they going to do? You know, that that's the thing. You know, you and me was like, all right, whatever. You know, I was laughing about it. You know, I yeah, mean, you pop I back up and you get back at it. Yeah, exactly. But I, I think that's going to be a, a little bit of a struggle, you know, moving forward, you know, but I think. You yeah, know. well, and, and you look at the generation now, it's just everything is different, though. Like you look at the game, the way that basketball is played, the way that football is played. It's, you know, you have to be more careful with, you know, fouls and you can't, you know, you can't do certain things in football that we used to do, you know, growing up or, you know, in, in high school or in college. So. The game's evolved as well. Obviously, everything's been moving in the right direction for the safety of the players and safety of everyone involved. But in my opinion, it's not the same game. It never will be the same game. Nope. And like you said, the fact that the generations are getting to that point where, you know, they, they're not facing adversity as much, you see it. You know, you, you see the, the people who are the entrepreneurs now of our generation you know, we kind of have that whole mindset, whereas the younger generation, they're more inclined to work in a corporate type of mindset where it's like, you know, more structure and less risk and again, less adversity, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, like I said, it's just, it's, it's a part of, I guess, the way things are evolving and in, uh, in, uh, at least here in the U.S. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, of course, and I and I think, like I said, it's going to change. But at the end of the day, it opens up more stuff for people that. It's don't funny it. too, because like I, I talked to some of these guys that I, you know, I have some friends, that, you know, um, who like trained, you know, they were fighters in Argentina, or you know, they they trained soccer, you know, out in Europe, or they played hockey, you know, and they all have a, a different mindset um, when it comes to sports because, you know, a lot of the times they have you know, obviously they're put in situations that are much different than ours, right? Like it's either a way, a way, out, a way out of their current lifestyle or it's, you know, a way out of um, sometimes their country or their, you know, you know whatever their situation is. Yeah, it's a way probably out. similar they, to the Latin American privileged, yeah, There's a lot of us here in the States. Yeah. So like for me, it's like when you look at sports from that level, if you're playing something with the, you know, the idea that this is a way out, this is going to be a way of life. You put so much more dedication and effort into it. I think a lot of times now with the younger generations is that there is so many resources to your, you know, your, you know, you have like at your fingertips, you know, if you want to learn how to throw a football better, you Google it, you know, and you, you know, you might not get it right. You get upset and then you go try out a different technique and you go figure out who's your next favorite quarterback and you try to copy what they do. You know, whereas in a lot of other countries or even just like less underprivileged places here in the U.S., they just get it done by any means necessary. It's like, you know, I don't my technique might be completely off, but that ball's going in the hoop at the end of the day because that's how they're getting out of their situation. So it's like it's a different mentality. And uh, I think one of the things that, you know, you kind of see still in sports is that the guys that especially like in boxing, for example, the guys that have their back against the wall are always the ones that will just get the job done by any means necessary. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a thing of the past. I think it's something that's going away, but um, you know, like I said, it is what it is. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, it's much like the kids, you know, from Latin America that play baseball, you know, it's either you do this or yeah. the, the other road isn't, is it's not, you have, don't have another option, you know? And I think, uh, you know, just bringing that up with boxing other countries, I think that's where we're still going to see that drive. You're never going to take that away because they don't have a choice. You know, in the right, Dominican yeah. Republic, it was either, you know, go fishing or do something or, you know, play baseball. You know, there's no, they don't have a choice, you know, and I think, you know, it's it's one of those things where, you know, you have an A and a B, well, get rid of B, you know, yeah. so A's all and, you have. And that mentality of just get it done by any means necessary. Like, that's a rare, rare thing these days. 
mm-hmm. is, you know, it, I find like we, we have too many excuses. And whereas a lot of times, you know, these guys, they're, they just, like I said, they just get it done. Yep, exactly. And if you look at the people that are successful, you know, your Gary V's and all that stuff, that's what they did. You know, that's, that's, I think the, one of the things is that the kids these days that, you know, certainly I've, I've noticed a little bit, they don't want to find out how they did things. So they don't know how they done, they did things and what they went through. And they don't understand that all the people still at the top of the mountain went through that adversity and just pushed through by any means necessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. So why don't we go into it, man? Let's go. Uh, why don't we talk about Brand Connect first, man? Talk about why you started it, what it's involved. Sure. And- uh-huh. Speaking of adversity. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I started Brand Connect a few years back. Basically, just to make a long story short, when I initially got down to Miami, um, I moved down here with two of my ex-business partners, um, friends and, and business partners at the time. And we had an opportunity to take over marketing for a large hospitality company. Um, so we took over the hospitality company's marketing for a bit and then um, basically had a falling out with my, with my partners. Um, they just wanted to go a different direction. They didn't, weren't really taking business seriously. They were looking more for like the short term, you know, party atmosphere of Miami where I was looking to, you know, obviously come down here and build a business and, and do something that's going to change my life for the, the long term. Um, so we parted ways and I decided to launch Brand Connect. Um, Brand Connect is a marketing agency specializing in social media management, influential marketing and, and brand management for, you know, athletes and entertainers and influencers and whatnot. Um, so, you know, when I first started up the company, you know, most of my clients happened to be within the health and wellness space. So whether they were, you know, uh, trainers or athletes or whether they were selling a product in the fitness space. Um, you know, like a supplement or, you know, different types of accessories and whatnot. I just kind of figured out that that was my niche. Um, I wanted to focus on, you know, building businesses in the supplement and in the fitness industry. And, you know, that kind of gave me a a direction to take Brand Connect. And then from there, just kind of snowballed where I had referrals from current clients that I was working with. And um, I started, you know, working with certain, you know, different, you know, brands that would introduce me to some athletes and then, it, again, it kind of snowballed, and then it went into um, this past year where I decided to launch the the management side of the agency, which is, you know, I manage a lot of these brands' marketing campaigns and social media campaigns and whatnot, um, but I also want to get involved in starting to actually manage athletes themselves and helping them get those branding and marketing deals. Um, so I started working with a few different, you know, athletes, some talent, uh, on show or, or on air talent. Um, and just from there, it kind of, you know, evolved into this agency where we have a more of a full service and we're offering brands to both manage their, their actual social media accounts, help them with content, help them build out websites, do their influencer marketing, um, and then connecting them obviously with, you know, real influencers and connecting them with athletes and, and whatnot who can obviously push their brand and help them become a little bit bigger than what they are. Well, that's great, man. You know, a lot of stuff there. But like I said, uh, if you notice what he was talking about, right, you, you didn't expect any of this to happen, right? You came down with a, a specific goal or a, a specific point, And then it's kind of crazy, you know, once you start putting the work in or once I think it's more once you start to push the limit past where you think you should be or where you thought your end point is, how stuff starts to kind of come apart, you know, or I mean, not come apart, you know, progress, you know, progress. It's the same thing kind of with the, yep, exactly. You know, same thing yeah. with the podcast. You know, it's uh, one of those things. I started doing it, and then all of a sudden, it just, you know, starts build little by little, man. And I think that's a, an awesome message. And then for everybody listening that's interested in doing this stuff, to understand, as long as you keep pushing through the adversity, you're good to where you are. And a lot of times, you don't start where you, you know, kind of you, you wanted to do. Or, or Yeah, whatever. well, for me, for me, it was more of like, you know, when I first started the, when I first started the agency, um, you know, it was, it was mainly – revolved around the content side of it and growing their, you know, their brands and their accounts primarily. But then as I built up these relationships with some of these clients, it became more of like a becoming more of their brand. Right. So I was taking on more roles with them. It wasn't just doing their social media. I became their entire, you know, uh, marketing manager, brand manager, if you will. So, you know, being able to help them with, you know, new product launches, for example, and then getting involved in, you know, certain influencer campaigns and then events and stuff like that. 
that was where it kind of took a step up and things got fun. Um, mm-hmm. cause the social management, you know, social media management side of it's not fun by any means. And like for anyone that's looking to get into that space, it's a lot of work. It's tedious stuff. It's long hours, but you know, the money obviously is good if you build up your business. Um, but it's just like, for me, it was all about building something bigger. Right. And I always wanted to work with athletes and I always enjoyed working with brands. So being able to have an agency that can service both sides of that was what my, you know, kind of my overall goal became after, you know, things went south with my business partners and, you know, they kind of want to do their own thing. And I took, you know, you know, my route and did my own thing. So, um, you know, luckily it worked out in my favor. And I mean, you know, I built up, you know, where we are today, but it's, uh, it's just crazy how things progress. Cause I would have never in a million years guessed if you asked me five years ago, you know, in five years, what will you be doing? This is the last thing I probably would have said um, just because of where I was then, you know, a struggling entrepreneur who's just launching their first company in Miami, had struggles with, you know, the relationships with my business partners and, you know, being, I was the, I was the only investor in the company. So having that financial burden of making sure that we're staying afloat or making sure that we're able to, you know, keep moving and close deals and whatnot, um, you know, being able to come from that and then kind of just, again, pivot in each step of the way into what I became today. And then obviously get to a point where now it's all about scaling. It's about how big I can go, about how many clients we can bring on, about how big the influencers we can work with. But um, it's cool to see that natural progression as, as things went on, looking back on it five years later, four, four and a half years later, whatever it is. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's amazing, you know, it, the, the things you bring up about how you, you ask you five years ago, you'd have, you know, you wouldn't necessarily say you'd be sitting in this way, but this is what happened, you know, and it, and it also to uh, all the things that you did throughout the journey, right, and all the things that you were good at, now they've kind of come together as one, you know, talking about want to be involved in sports and also being, you know, skilled in working with brands and people, and uh, now you get to do kind of a little bit of both, you know, and you get to have fun with it. Yeah, and it's kind of funny that you actually you say it that way too, because when you look back on my experience with all the companies, whether I worked corporate or whether I worked on my own as an entrepreneur, before I actually launched my companies, it was always, I look back on it as like little kind of uh, stepping stones towards where I am today without even realizing, it, right? Like I was working with companies when I was selling software in the public relations space, in the marketing space, you know, learning how to do Boolean searches, for example, on Google, which then benefited me, you know, five, whatever it was, seven years later, where I was working with companies who were asking me if I know how to do these things, because that's how they're looking to, you know, um, find certain content or be able to monitor their brand or whatnot. And it was because I had the experience working in the past and then all the sales experience I had being able to sell on my own. You know, that's like the scariest thing when you're an entrepreneur. If you no longer have a steady paycheck. You know, when you work in corporate every two weeks, you get a steady paycheck, no matter whether you do, you know, a ton of work or whether you barely lift your pen, you're still getting paid. You know, for me and for any entrepreneur, you're, you're just depending on how much you hustle. So, you know, if, if you don't know sales, you're not comfortable selling, well, it's very difficult to be successful as an entrepreneur if you can't sell. So all of the experience that I had over those years of working in corporate America, learning the different types of sales techniques and the psychology of the sale and the whole full cycle and whatnot, obviously, you know, came full circle with me when I launched Brand Connect and, you know, or working with, you know, 50 different clients and, and, you know, these different pieces are coming up years and years later. Yeah, you hit it right on the head, man. And that's why I wanted to do the show. But uh, the experience, you know, no experience, you know, and you know, and so do I, as you get older and as you start going through the journey and as things start to mesh together, you realize no experience is bad. You know, regardless if you were at a job for three months and it was terrible or whatever you went through, all those things, if you do it right, take you take all those things and that's what makes you who you are today. You know, and it allows you to build Absolutely. upon those things. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So why don't we go into the, the Dr. Hemp stuff, you know, bouncing off of Brand Connect and then going into that. Absolutely. And one last thing just to kind of touch on that last piece too. Um, it's funny because I look back on a lot of the, we were talking about adversity earlier, like all the adversity that I faced over the last, you know, four years since I moved out to Miami and decided to take the big risk. You know, it put me in a position where I've never been more grateful and I've never been in a better position. I've met people who are going to be, you know, my best friends for life. And I, I've met, 
you know, I've been put in situations where I've been able to, you know, um, look back and be like, I never thought I'd be here in a million years, you know, like around a certain type of crowd or being with certain people who are just made all good vibes all the time. You know, what I do for a living, I work in marketing, you know, but every day I wake up, I go hang out with my best friend. You know, we work on the computer for 12, 15, you know, most usually more hours than that, but 12, 15 hours a day. But I'm still enjoying what I do. I'm still loving what I do. So, like, you know, I'm super grateful for that. But, um, but just, yeah, anyway, getting into the whole Dr. Hemp side of things. Um, so, you know, a few years back, uh, I had an opportunity to, you know, work with um, my business partner, Lev, and helping him grow his Amazon business and taking on an operational role for his Amazon business. And basically what we do is we manage products in Amazon. So we help them sell, manage the full service. So we do, you know, we have people who do the customer service. We have people who are helping with the management of the actual product inventory. We have, um, you know, creatives who are helping us with the actual graphics and whatnot. So we were building out the company and, you know, we had decided to um, essentially get into business together with, you know, creating a brand that would be something that we both enjoyed, something that we both saw that would be a huge benefit to us at the time. And he's also a former athlete and, you know, I'm a former athlete. So we were looking to, well, how can we go into business together? And one of the things that kind of popped up was, um, you know, CBD. It's a huge benefit in terms of, you know, the therapeutic side of it for, you know, anti-anxiety and, and being able to, um, you know, use it for helping you sleep and stuff, but it's also great for like your joints and aches and pains and stuff to reduce that annoying, you know, chronic pain that you have before you go to sleep from the football injuries I, you know, I had years and years ago. So, um, you know, we kind of put our heads together and we decided to, you know, to piece this together and to put, you know, this, our efforts into launching this company. And um, it's been going very well. I mean, things are you know, great now. And we're looking at a point where we're looking to pretty much expand into, you um, you know, certain kind of verticals, you know, whether it be MMA or right right now with the NFL, it's still banned, but, you know, we're looking to really kind of press forth with a lot of retired guys and um, work with certain industries to help set a foot in the door so that we can, you know, once things fully become legal on the, on the CDD side, you know, it's an easy transition. So, like, you know, getting ourselves up, set up for success in the future and, and just grinding, in, you know, day in and day out and doing what we do. Yeah, no, the, uh, the Dr. Hemp stuff for anybody out there is fantastic. I mean, I use it. Uh, I call Rob every month or so, get some stuff, uh, you know, perfect for the injuries. Like I said, all that stuff is great, you know, and, and we've talked about this before. You know, a lot of the stuff out there, you know, uh, bothers, you know, would bother my stomach or it wouldn't really work. But this stuff, just like I said, spot on, man, you know, and an and awesome product. But again, sure. touching on, yeah, man, of course. And, you know, also just touching on the stuff you said, you know, that sports side, you know, that, that thing you did, you know, 10, 15 years ago, again, is coming back, you know, you, you, now you're able to work with the athletes. And, and I think you said something very important before, you know, being put in a position with, with certain people, you know, running with certain crowds that you didn't think you would be involved in, you know, same thing for me, training at a high level in the city, you know, I, I was able to be around people, you know, with hedge funds and, and banks and things and, and people that I never thought that I would be able to, you know, mix up, have dinner with, be involved with, experience things. But you realize, you know, with me, it's it's people skills, articulation, all that stuff. All those skills that I learned from training and from being around all the different clients have set me up to where I can go sit down with somebody that runs companies and things like that. And we're on the same level, you know, so I think yeah. it's awesome for, you know, you bringing that up, you know, not only were you able to, you know, start your own thing, from the experience of Brand Connect and, and the, you know, the, the thing with corporate America and stuff like that. But now you can also bring that football full circle and now you can, you know, chop it up with those guys because that's something that you uh, have done in the past. Yeah, and one, I mean, you know, being a, an athlete and playing football specifically, I've always kind of meshed that into what I do because it's a passion of mine, right? So like, you know, launching Brand Connect and focusing specifically on fitness and health and supplement industry or not is because I enjoy that industry. I've been in it for so long, you know, being able to work with athletes and help managing their, you know, their marketing deals or, or whatnot, or talent in general, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy working with these athletes and helping them, you know, make money off the field or helping them set themselves up for a career when they're done playing football. Um, and then the same thing goes into like, you know, the CBD, you know, finding something that would not only help myself and, you know, with, you know, obviously recovery and, you know, kind of the, the whole, you know, reducing anxiety or the knee, you know, pain that I have using freeze or heat on it, you know, it's a 
help me, you know, when I go through boxing or something. You know, more importantly, when you start seeing these effects that, that other people have had with your products, it's cool. It's cool to be a part of them. Like, it's cool to have someone reach out to you and be like, hey, you know, I just got off the field from training camp and I've been using freeze. It's amazing. Like, I feel great. You know, to know that you have a, a, something to do with that and you're still helping athletes some way, one way or another, is just, you know, it's fun for me to do. Yeah, and I, I think you bring up that the best thing in the world is that love. You know, a lot of people, you know, they listen to Zuckerberg and they listen to Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and they try to do the same thing, right? Because they want to make money. And at the heart of it is you have to love it, right? And the first part of being an entrepreneur is you have to love what you do because as you know, and I'm sure you've tried, you know, going through tribulations, sometimes you try to get away from certain things and it always will pull you back in because you have that passion and the love, you know, like with me, with, with sports, sometimes, you know, I didn't think I was going to do it or I was going to go a different way, but now for a circle, you know, I get to talk about it every day. So I think the biggest thing, you know, that you brought up is that love, you know, if you're going to do this, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, if you're going to work for yourself, you have to love what you do and it doesn't matter what it is, but you also can't go, Oh, I'm going to go, make cars or I'm going to go do something that I love. You know, I love people who are like, you know, what's going to make money? Let's go do that. And I'm like, yeah, but if you don't love, you know, making shovels, you're not going to make money at it, you know? And that's where all these people that everybody reads about, they love what they do. Elon Musk yeah. loves space and Tesla. Gary V loves marketing and, and all that stuff. You know, Jeff Bezos loved that, those sort of things. So it's not like they just figured out a way to make money. It's that their passion and their love kind of just mesh with the times and that's how they made money. And I think that's something that's kind of misunderstood a little bit because you get a lot of people and I'm sure you've talked to a lot of people where they just want to do something similar. They just want to do something like you talked about, you know, ex-partners to make money in a quick fix. And unless you love it, unless you w are willing to do whatever it is for free and that burning passion always wakes you up at night, you're not going to be successful. Absolutely. It's, it's funny you say that too, like work for free. Like the one thing I, I, I experienced the most with either people that I, I've worked with in the past or people that I brought on to, you know, potentially become a part of the business that I'm, I'm creating or whatnot is everybody wants something before they actually even do anything. Like, you know, they, they, they want to be successful, but they don't want to put in the work for it. They're like, well, I need to stop work at 6 p.m. because my buddies are coming over and go grab a drink. It's like, well, I, I sacrificed not going out and keeping to myself and isolating myself, and, you know, with my laptop for years, years building and just trying to do something that I knew would be bigger when, you know, when it's all said and done, something that I can build actual life and career off of, not just like a, a quick money that's going to make me a few thousand dollars so I can live for another few months or another whatever, however long that money would last me. For me, it's like, no, I want to build something that I could, you know, look back on and be like, yeah, well, I got 50 people working for me. I got 150 people working for me. I just chill and, you know, I, I do my thing, but I created my empire. That was my job. I created my empire and now I hired everyone else to keep running. So for me, it was always like, and, you know, for I, I had to constantly, um, you know, do things the last few years that would, you know, like I said before, help me make money if I love to do it. So we talk about sports cards, right? Sports mm -hmm. cards. I love sports cards since I was a kid. My friends are looking at me like, you're making money selling sports cards? I'm like, yeah, why not? Just got on it. Just got on it. Yeah, but they're like, they're looking at me. I'm like, yeah, but why not? I love it. I enjoy it. Like, if I'm going to sit there and read about sports cards for fucking five hours, I might as well make a little money off of it. Why not? You know, it's, it's a... For me, it's like if you actually love what you do, everything becomes easier. The work becomes easier. The success from the work becomes easier. Your mindset, you just you become more relaxed in what you do. So that's always been most important to me is whatever you do, do it with, you know, with passion. Absolutely love it because otherwise it's going to be hell. Of course, man. And, and talking on the sports cards, just got involved in it. But same thing with you. You know, if you're going to spend six, seven hours reading about it or not even that, if you if you look up a sports card, right, because that's how it started with me. We talked about, you know, Gary Vee. He started talking about sports cards. And I said, all right, well, I got some old sports cards. Then I started looking them up. Then I started listening to some YouTubes about what's going on with the thing. Then you start ending up on card ladder, you know, and, and looking at prices. And eventually you're like, if I'm spending all this time out of pure enjoyment, why not make money out of it? You know, and I, and I think that's, 
you know, I think that's an amazing point, you know, and, and, and like I said, another question you get all the time, people are like, well, how do I, you know, what direction I go? I said, sit down and write down what you love. Doesn't matter that's what it, it is. That's where you start. And find a way to make money at it. That's it. That's it. Not a million dollars, not change the world. You don't have to fly to Mars and you don't have to, you know, create something that's going to cure anything. At the root of everything, you find out what you love to do. It doesn't, you could knit, you could yell. I mean, yodel, doesn't matter. But then, then from there, you expand and say, okay, how do I make money doing what I love? And also, what is my gift? Not things that I have to work on. What am I naturally born with? And then you combine the two and you figure out a way. Absolutely. And you actually, it's, you hit that on the head too. It's like, it doesn't matter what you do, especially in 2020, right? Like mm-hmm. in, in where we are today, there are so many resources at your fingertips mm-hmm. to create anything that you possibly want to create. So there's, that's why I, I, I keep, you know, like what we, we were talking about earlier, the whole excuses thing, right? There's always excuses for that younger generation. I feel like at least personally, mm-hmm. Yeah, Whereas, yeah, like, there's sure. always a reason as to why you can't do that thing. Whereas, you know, if you're truly a talented musician and you want to make a career off of music, you might not be a rock star, but you can make a career selling guitar lessons on YouTube. You know, like, you can make a considerable amount of money, um, better than, you know, a lot of people who are working nine to five corporate jobs selling lessons on, on Instagram or, you know, using different types of resources to your disposal to make that passion of yours something that you can monetize and people are scared of it because they're like well you know i love art but how am i supposed to make money you know like it doesn't seem realistic to you if you don't you know if you're not looking at it from the mindset of just diving all in but then that goes back to your personality you know we like we were speaking about earlier not everyone set out for things like that but um yeah man i've always just wanted to to do what i love for a living and as i get older there's certain things that i'm picking up on that i enjoy doing and as I pick up on those things, my mindset as an entrepreneur is just like, well, why not make money off of it? So it's like, all right, well, sports cards. I have a bunch at home. I'm, I started, I put a bunch of money into it when it first became popular a few months back, you know? So it's like I invested a little bit. Well, now how do I make money off of it? And, you know, and that's been the fun part. So it's like, you know, being able to do what you love and, and, and making sure that you stay passionate about throughout the, the whole process is also the trick too, right? Like, you got to stay passionate throughout the whole thing. A lot of times people lose that flame because they get bored of it or they don't see the, the success right away. Yeah, no, passion is, is what's going to keep you going all the time. And, and I think, you know, that's something you brought up, you know, it's the spirit, you know, and I, I think, you know, much like my opinion with coaching, I think like some people can do it and some people can't, you know, because the th- things that I noticed, you know, as you get involved in, and I'm sure you agree, as you get involved more with the entrepreneurial stuff, right? And, and learning how every time you find something you like, how can I make money? And not that everything involves money, but how can I monetize this where I can still enjoy it, but, but why not make money? Yeah. The people in your inner circle, do you realize that those people that you hang around with most are mostly entrepreneurs? Because when you go out of that and not that you, you know, you not to get rid of friends or anybody for anybody listening, but your circle becomes solely entrepreneurs and people with a like mindset, because you realize that if you share your ideas, like if me and you talk about this, you're not gonna be like, yo, that's nuts. You're going to give me advice and help me. But you have other friends, still great people, but that work in that corporate America, that ladder, they're not going to understand, or it's going to be a 12 second conversation and there's not going to be anything really there. Whereas me and you could sit down and talk about sports cards for two days. Yeah. And, and that's again, and that, that just comes down to, you know, the whole, you know, having the mindset to be an entrepreneur is like, you know, that not everything involves money, right? Like, mm-hmm. it's not that I just try to do everything for the money. Of course not. But if you're spending time, like I said, being passionate about something, I mean, I'm, I'm, why not, right? Like, you know, for me, more is always better, right? So it's like, if I can enjoy doing it, and it's not something that is, you know, uh, taking my time away from something else, or if it's not something that's, you know, harmful in any way yeah why not make a little make a little coin off now, like right now like you know talk about it i bought up when you know months of back i bought up however many lots of, of basketball cards i just bought up a ton of different lots of basketball cards and i bought up a few boxes right and, and i opened up the wax boxes and saw what i had i was sitting on a bunch of, of not garbage but a bunch of cards that weren't the pockets right like mm-hmm. they're they're not the zion rookie cards or the job rookie cards or, Jordan's or Kobe's all the time. I got a bunch of those, but 
along with the lots to get a lot of everything else. I started an eBay account, started selling on eBay just to see what I can do, you know, like first month. It's like, all right, I did $1,500 in the first month, you know? So it's like, I had all of these boxes sitting at my apartment. So in my mindset, again, going back to being an entrepreneur, I'm like, well, that cardboard box is sitting here full of a bunch of pieces of wax. Yeah, that I'm going to throw in the garbage. Yeah, that, what am I going to do with them? They're going to stay here because I didn't find the card that I was looking for. Well, screw it. Why not? Let me just go list a bunch of stuff on eBay and see what happens. Mm -hmm. The one thing I realized when I started working in e-commerce is that there's a market for everything. There's a market for everything. So, like, those people, if anyone's listening, if, you're, if you have some, like, you know, passion that you don't really think you can make a living off of, you most likely can make a living. There's so many niches of people that just love certain things. And that like, that's a category that you'll make money off. Of. Those are people that will buy your products and buy into your brand and want to talk to you and engage with you and follow your podcast and, you know, learn more about it. But it's like, you know, you have to get out of that mindset of like, Oh no, that won't work. That won't work. Anything nowadays you can build a business off. If you do, if you do it the right way, you have the right mindset. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's just funny how sports cards came about. And like, that's another thing, you know, I, I create the Instagram account for it and then I start posting content for it. And it's just to become something that's again, fun for me to do while also it's, it's obviously involved with what I do on a daily basis anyway. Yeah. But like I said, it takes a mind of its own. And, and you were talking about the same thing. I mean, I found out yesterday, we've been cleaning up my garage. Somebody I know was like, you ever use Facebook marketplace? I was like, no. And I made, you know, a hundred dollars on stuff. I was going to put in the garbage and I'm like, but that, and that's, you know, that really is a thing. And Gary Vee talks about that all the time, right? Like he goes like to, to garage sale. He finds all these things and he sells them on eBay. That's, you, think he, you think he still needs to do this? Like, obviously not. He's just doing it for the passion because he wants to show other people what he's doing. But guess what? I guarantee you he still gets that same thrill when he buys something for $3 at a garage sale and then flips it on eBay for $12. Like, no matter how big you get, no matter how famous, how popular you get, how much money you get, that feeling of taking something that you went from, you bought something for this much and you sold it for that much, that flip, that hustle is addictive. And yes, that yes. is more specifically what you get hooked to when it comes to, you know, being that entrepreneur or hustler mindset where you're launching all these things and you're getting involved in all these businesses is that you get addicted to that feeling of taking, you know, a $4 item and selling it for 15 and making a profit of 11 bucks for doing nothing, for just listening and on eBay, you know, buying stuff and selling. It's a beautiful yep. thing. Yep. No, you're right. And like I said, I think my lore was early when I first started. I was a big roulette guy. I still am. And it's the same thing. You take a $10 coin and you turn it into $20. And then you'd see how much you can turn that into 40 and then 80 and oh. then, and it's a constant. But then as you talked about before, just relating what we talked about, but then you realize the strategy. Okay, how do I go into this and have fun? But now how do I not lose all my money? Or how do I yeah. put... How do I kind of put stopping on things so that I go in with X amount of money and I want to make this much, but if I, if I get to here, I have to stop. Or if I get to this point, I have to pull out so I don't kind of screw up my stuff. And, and I think that's a, that's a big thing is, you know, it's not necessarily, it's also, you want to have fun, you want to make money, but you also have to set boundaries on yourself because we've been talking about the cards and different things. It's very important to set boundaries and know where your limits are also because you have a lot of, of people course. who do that throw tons of money at, at one thing and then it collapses and then you get that, well, so-and-so is an entrepreneur or I tried a business already, you know, and I think you brought that up just a second ago. You have to know what you're doing. You have to do it in a certain way. You just can't throw money at a thing. Yeah, well, it goes like that with any business, right? It's like you can have all the money in the world to back something, you know, you can go all in on sports cards and, and buy $10,000 worth of stuff, but if you'll know what you're looking at, you'll know how to flip it or you'll have strategies in mind already to to move it or to make the money then it, it's never going to work right like you know in my industry being social media and marketing you see that way too often like you see people who kind of look at someone like myself and they're like oh well he did it so i can launch a social media company too like you know we should i should be able to do that why not like i know like, whether i grew up with them or it's like, whatever you know like they have that mindset that they can do it too but then they don't think about the details of it, you know, like the strategy, the planning, and like, you know, so they dive into something where it's, it's, you know, half-assed to, you know, lack of better, you know, words, but like, it's just like, they, they really don't go all in into it fully with their, 
whether they're passionate about it or whether they're actually fully educated about it, right? They're just impulsive. They're like, oh, I want to go launch this company because it seems cool or it seems fun, right? Like he looks like he's having a good time. Let me go do it. And I think that's where people get in trouble is that, is that when they rely more on the impulse rather than, you know, the educational kind of risk where it's like, yeah, I, you know, uh, I'm going to take a risk and maybe doing something that I don't know too much about, but at least I'm open to learning more about it and to being the most educated person in, the, in this industry, right? Like being open to spending late nights, Googling random forms and finding, you know, different ways of accomplishing your goal that maybe the competition is not doing. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's amazing. And, and one of the things that Gary talks about, again, that most people forget is he strictly says in all the videos, and I think it's true with everything, spend 50, take 50 hours, take 80 hours yep. and read, invest, read forums, and then buy your first card. He was like, you shouldn't be out there. Ben, and it's the same thing with everything else. You know, I think that gets lost in the shuffle. You know, you talked about it. People see your Instagram. They look at what you're doing and say, oh, I know him. We grew up the same way. We played football, yada, yada, yada. I can do this too. And they don't realize that you're st everything you do is still calculated, you know, and, and that's just who you are. And I think that's one of the blaring things that it's deep in there in people that do things with entrepreneur in their own business is that, we're just made to kind of do that behind the scenes stuff already. You know, you're not just going to fling into that, but I think that's something that's kind of hidden behind it. You know, you see all the entrepreneurs now you see on Instagram, you know, every guy, every person selling a course and all this stuff. But I think one of the things is, you know, people don't understand that you have to do your research. You have to figure out a, which guy works for you, which one am I like, and B, what am I willing to risk or sacrifice to learn? And then it's not even, you know, I'm sure you get it a lot too. When should I launch my company? When should I do this? It has nothing to do with that. When you're comfortable, when you have a scenario and when you have that passion and that same belief that led you to start to be able to, okay, now I'm confident in my abilities to take this to somebody else and make money or turn it into a something that's when it's there. You know, nobody can tell you, I don't think when to launch a business, when to sell a sports car, you know, when to push your brand. Yeah. And that's, and that's big too. It's like, you gotta, you have to be comfortable with, with the situation you're in to, to know that like, for example, if you are taking a risk and launching a new company, like, you know, at the end of the day, it is a risk, right? Like it's not, it's not, it doesn't work out for everybody all the time. My first business venture with my two business partners went south. Like that wasn't, you know, I lost money. I lost a lot of money on that deal. You know, like it's, and it's like, you look at situations like that and you're just like, you know, that might deter 99 out of a hundred people from moving forward and launching another company. They might just go run back and, and, and go back into their corporate job because they got scared because their first venture went down, you know, but for me, it's always been like, and for not just me, for a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, you, you figure out what that passion is. And then if you're, like I said before, if you're just, if you're willing to put in the work and like, you're not afraid of the hard work and you're, and you're, you seriously are passionate about it. Like you can, you can do some special things. Like people underestimate themselves. A lot of people, I have, I have a lot of boys that I went to college with that I grew up with high school with who reach out to me and they're like, Hey, I had an idea about, you know, I, I wanted to do like an online coaching program or, I have, uh, I have a friend of mine who, um, you know, he's launching a, uh, a what's it called, a, a food truck in Colorado, and he wants help with branding, and I was thinking about investing in it. What do you, like, you know, like, random, random stuff, right? Like, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, they're now thinking about doing something, you know, like, one of my buddies knows nothing about food trucks in Colorado, but he's interested in investing in it now because he knows that, He's seen success in, in other people on IG or in social media who have branded their food trucks a certain way or who have created a, a community for people in an area to go to this food truck and make it special, right? Like make it like that neighborhood staple type thing. And he sees that other people are, are going, you know, taking these risks and investing in projects that they don't really know much about. But he did the proper thing and came to, you know, someone like myself and was like, hey, one, could you help with the marketing, right? Could you set us up for success so that if I do become a part of this project, you know, we're in, we have someone who has experience with marketing. And then two, you know, he's kind of just, and it's a friend of mine. So it's like, you know, it's no big deal. We chop it up for hours, but it's like, you know, we, we sit there and pick each other's brains about whether it's a smart move, whether we should do it or not. 
but this is a kid that has worked corporate his entire life. Like since the day we graduated college, got into corporate finance and has worked in finance and uh, you know, he's an accountant, he's working accountant his entire life. So it's like, you know, for him to think outside the box and go from an, being an accountant to like, Hey, I'm going to invest in this random project in Colorado. Like, you know, it's, it's a cool venture, but you know, it can, you know, for him, he's taking the proper steps. You know, it's like, at the end of the day, if you do the right things and you take those proper steps, it could be a great choice. And, and that's the, the thing that people have to realize is like you by being open to learning more, it's only going to help you. So many people cut that off. They're like, no, like, I don't know anything about that industry. So I won't get involved in it. No, like, oh, I don't know anything about this. I won't get involved in it. If you don't know anything about it, learn about it first and then dive in, you know, but it doesn't mean you got to stay away from it forever. You know, but. Yeah, no, I, and I, I think that's, that's fantastic. Like I said, uh, and that's something, I mean, I'll just bring up my experience with the podcast. You know, when I first started doing this six months ago, I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I could talk, I can hold conversations. But you I never can... edited before? No, I never edited. I didn't even, I made my logo. I mean, I never edited. I never used Zoom. I mean, nothing. I was like, okay, I guess we, you know, and I was like everybody else. Oh, I'm going to download Anchor and I'm going to call people on my cell phone and then I'm going to go through it. And then I was on one or two and I started talking to people and they're like, listen, man, a, that's not the way to do it. And, you know, you start going to forums and they're like, if you want it to sound good, you got to get a microphone. You got to do this. You have to, you know, kind of make your guests where like everybody fits together. You have to kind of make it structured, you know, and, and but those you did your research. Learn. Of course. Yep. You, you know, did, and you, it, you did your part to learn more about this, this random no man's land type mm -hmm. of you know, project that you wanted to start where you're like, Hey, I don't have any experience in it, but I like it. And, you know, it's something that I think I, I'd be passionate about. So you went all in and you educated yourself. And that's what it's all about. Yep, exactly. And I learned just from trial and error, you know, okay, how do I make a logo? Okay, let's go on. That's the thing. best way to learn. Yep, exactly. Start clicking. So bouncing right off that point, for anybody out there listening that wants to get into entrepreneurship, you know, not necessarily the branding stuff like you or anything, what do you feel is the, you know, top three things for you that, that you would start with? Um, top three things for someone who is looking at entrepreneurship. Um, one, I mean, it's, it's not really something that you can, I guess, you know, um, build, but you just have to have it is you got to have thick skin. Like you have to, you have to be okay. Like, with, you know, you have to be okay with losing and then getting back up and then starting again. You have to be okay with people judging you for for what you're doing because like the first the first judgment i got from wanting to become an entrepreneur was like you know uh you're an idiot why are you gonna go quit a job where you're making good money you know so, you know every two weeks you get your salary to risking it all for something that you really i i knew you know i mean i, I wasn't marketing a little bit but i didn't know anything about running an agency right like i never ran my own agency before i never did, you know, client branding way back when. So for me, it was going into an entirely new realm. And I just got judged left and right from my family, my friends of like, yo, you're just, you're wasting your time. You're taking too big of a risk. Um, so just having that thick skin, number one, is definitely going to be something that probably most important. Um, I would say being, being a, a realistic dreamer, if you will. Um, don't think that, you know, you, you don't think that the, the sky is the limit because it's not, to be honest with you. Like, you see this shit all the time with entrepreneurs. Like, you know, they, they have all the hopes in the world for this big project that they're doing and it's going to make you know, the biggest splash in the industry. And then next thing you know, everything goes under, right? So as an entrepreneur, just really making sure, like, you have uh, – Kind of that just in the back of your head, like, you got to understand it. It's, it's tough. Like, it's not easy, right? Um, I mean, I guess just being, not being afraid of hard work, not being afraid of long hours. Um, shit, I mean, I worked more now than I ever have in my entire life. I work more in one day than, you know, I know people who are corporate who sit there at their phone and just kind of like, you know, do the bare minimum because they hate what they do and they're waiting to go fly off to the next, you know, job that they want to go work at. 
But like, I mean, just not being afraid of hard work, literally working from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep, knowing that it's all for the bigger picture. Like that's something that is difficult when you're not going to the beach, but you can see the beach every day. It's difficult when all your friends are out at happy hour or hanging out on going out and doing things and you're stuck at home because you've got to catch up on emails and you have to, you know, do a bunch of, um, you know, content or you have to, you know, get some stuff together for the website, whatever it might be. Um, so really just, I mean, between those things, it's, it's, it's not for everybody, but it's something that it, I think if you, if you can, like I said, if you can have that, that thick skin, um, be that realistic, you know, type of dreamer and, and just not be afraid of hard work at all. It's like the recipe for success. It'll be fine. Um, and if you're not, and if, if things are struggling, you know, keep pushing because if, again, if you truly are those things, it, it will all fall into place. Awesome, man. Awesome advice, man. I love that realistic, realistic dreamer, which I think is great because, you know, you can, you know, you want it to be bigger than the stars, but you also have to analyze where you're at, you know, every step of the way and, and kind of understand where you're going, you know, so like realistic yeah. goals along the way to the sky, if you will. Like Frank Sinatra is my all time, you know, favorite singer, but I can never sound like Frank Sinatra. So I would <laughs> never try to be a singer, you know, like, so for me, it's like, if, if you're, you know, if you want to be a professional athlete, you know, but you've been a couch potato your whole life, it ain't going to happen. It's just, it's not, but you could be a trainer. You can show people the route. So finding your niche within that thing, in that, in that space is, is, is important too. But yeah, dude, it's, um, entrepreneurship is a crazy thing. You know, I mean, look at you. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, beautiful it's, it's thing. Crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's, it is. It's a beautiful, crazy, terrible thing. <laughs> Uh, so what's next, man? What's the future hold for, for you? Uh, what is the future hold for me? I don't know. Um, just a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas going on in my head right now. Um, but now my focus right now is, is scaling, is scaling brand connect. Um, it's being able to build out the business, build out the influencer side of things. Um, you know, being able to work with more athletes, onboard more athletes, and then, you know, build out my brands. I, I like the fact that I'm in a place where I can launch a brand and then ha have the ability to control it on, on social media or branding, whatever it is. So it's cool to be able to just kind of launch things as I please as I go along. Um, right now, I'm just having fun. Like I said, scaling the business. Wise Guy is the newest thing, so I'll be doing the whole card thing for a little bit. But uh, yeah, man. Awesome stuff, it. man. Awesome. So if anybody wants to reach you, has any questions and things, what, what's the best way to, uh, to get in contact with you? Uh, you can reach out to me through IG. Uh, usually the best way Just send me a DM. Um, if I don't get back to you within the, the first 24 hours, I either myself or someone on my team will reach out. But yeah, IG is always the best way. I keep everything on IG. Um, it's like my business card these days. So 